absolutely invaluable. He was the foundation stone on which the innings was laid. Not far away. That's the thing Winston Davis will have to guard against, slanting down the leg side. Kazim Omar just getting it out of the reach of Clive Lloyd. Shabbat Mian there to take strike. Pakistan, but at the moment we're seeing a contest between two men who have played for the same county side in England, Winston Davis and Jav Mianda, both of them who have played for Glamorgan. Gus Logie. Lloyd has six men inside the circle. So the tactics of each should be well known to both of the contestants. Singles obviously of paramount importance. 26 runs needed, seven wickets in hand. Very close to a wide now. I reckon Davis uh, gave that a long, hard look. Wondered what he'd done, but he got away with it. And he probably only got away with it because Java ducked. I mean, Duncan gave the impression the ball would have gone over his head. It probably would have passed him about uh, shoulder height. He's got it away. He's going to look for two. That's good feeling. Of course, from Davis, he'll be very relieved. Desmond Haynes, the fielder. It was not very good bowling, however. By pitching short, Davis is opening all those angles behind the wicket. That could have easily gone off the top edge, and had it gone off the top edge, it could have flown over the head of Dujon for four runs. Now, just have to look and see what Davis wants here. He switched Richards and uh, Lloyd from square leg to mid-wicket. Too short again, but he's got away with it again, Davis. Logie. And the overthrow saved by Dujon. Well, it's all happening here, and there's a tremendous amount of tension. 3 for 136 in 42. There are plenty of wickets in hand, seven wickets in hand, 136 runs on the board, 160 needed. And defeated Kazim on 27. Kazim Omar to face Marshall. Now he's asking for the man at third man to come in 15 yards. Shot. Almost it seemed as the ball left Marshall's hand. Kazim Omar had put his foot down the pitch and flashed it through the covers to the boundary. Marshall was stunned. And no wonder. Here's the little man who's got a double century for Pakistan against India this year. And he's playing as though he's got 200 runs under his belt already. Absolute confidence in that stroke of high, flourishing back lift. And that ball sizzling through the covers. What a shot to play to the fastest bowler in the world. That did nothing for Mar Marshall's ego. laughter out there. He's a very amusing little man, Kazimoma. That ball going down, lodging in his pad now. He does a little jig, goes out there, shakes the ball loose. And he makes people think in the crowd that that was close to being out with the ball almost rolling onto his stance. But remember, the law states that as soon as the ball lodges in the pad, it is dead.
first man at uh, second slip to the wicket keeper there might that one just have been the setup for the very quick one round about off stump Field it again and uh, Clive Lloyd leads by example yes a little bit of artificial uh, tension here and uh, Kizzy Mama playing to the crowd there trying to shake that ball loose and seeing it go back towards his stumps making as if to indicate that he would have been now had the ball rolled onto the stumps but that's not the case Welcome back to Sydney viewers. That's the situation here. Pakistan need 19. 44 balls remaining. Seven wickets in hand. And someone lucky in Sydney or in New South Wales has come up with the first division in Lotto. And now 19 needed for a Pakistan victory. He's playing absolutely wonderful, this little Kazim Omar. That's the second time he's pushed that ball through the covers. This time he hardly seems to touch it. Two fours in one over from the fastest bowler in the world. Just a tap. Middle back lift. And it was all wrist. It was a great stroke. Just keep your eye on Roger Harper. I've seen this happen to players on this ground over the years. He just starts to bend down to pick it up. And all of a sudden it runs away from him and it's into the boundary. Quite often does that on those practice pitches with the slope down there and the very fast surface. What a good over for Kazim Omar. Two marvellous strokes. Nine from that over, three for 145. Davis again. And what a competition this World Championship of Cricket has been. What a championship of surprises. 15 runs needed for a Pakistani victory, a surprise Pakistani victory over the Great West Indies. We've seen Australia beaten by Pakistan. We've seen England beaten by India. It really has been a topsy-turvy competition. Oh! And Javed Neandad there, almost bowled by a ball that really cut back very viciously. Javed Neandad looking to force that ball away on the offside. It cut back into him and cramped him so much so that he's only just able to deflect it down onto the ground. Right. his foot. competition they've beaten Australia they've gone on to beat England and the defeat they've sustained at the hands of India nail biting finish this once again too much down the leg side so much so that it's wide Now this is Winston Davis's uh, sixth over. It should be his last. Clive Lloyd should take him off after this because then he can bowl Garner for two and Marshall for two. Marshall from the southern end, then Garner. Oh, wide again. Well, that's, that's not good. Lloyd's not going to be at all pleased about that. Davis is giving way under the pressure out there. Two extra runs, two extra balls, and all it needs to complete Clive Lloyd's displeasure now is for Davis to bowl a no ball. It's 
So what should happen is that Davis comes off, Marshall bowls two more from the southern end, and then Garner two from the members end, or holding, whichever Lloyd wants. But he'll have six overs still to go. They may not all be needed. Only 12 runs needed. Blinder. And Winston Davis blew out his cheeks in absolute surprise there. It's all very amusing to the players, to the spectators. It was a superb square cut that. Didn't quite get on top of it, but my word did he hit it. Must be close to a wide. Well, three for 152, and that's not an over Winston Davis will recall with any great pleasure. It is quite futile to bowl balls of that length to a man as short of stature as little Kazim there sitting up you probably noticed his head was just as high as the bales eight runs needed six overs to go Javed me and dad the Pakistan skipper take the strike to Marshall of the final phases of this game showing that Pakistan, Pakistan are now within two boundaries of victory now moving into the final of the World Championship cricket with great ease seven wickets in hand and how handsome that they've done it We've really seen some superb stroke play from the two teams who look as though they're going to be finalists, Pakistan and India. Magnificent play on the part of India. It's Haruddin playing well. Sri Kant putting on some dazzling displays and what a feast of batsmanship we're in for when the finals are played here in Melbourne on Sunday. Today we've seen a good innings from Ramiz and some uh, beautiful strokes from young Kazimoma. There's been a ton of tension out there this evening and this afternoon. There still is from the West Indians. The Pakistan batsmen have relaxed a little. Kazim Omar, who came in ahead of his skipper, has played some magnificent strokes. And this will be a feeling that the West Indies are not used to. The feeling of impending defeat. They've only been beaten four times in this very long tour. After this, it will be four defeats they will sustain. It seems certain. Beaten in the test by New South Wales, beaten in one of the finals of the Benson Hedges World Series Cup games. At the moment, uh, Pakistan not really worrying about scoring off Malcolm Marshall. They have ample balls in hand, not taking undue risks against him. Marshall's over, 3 for 153 or 45, just 7 needed to win, but Marshall bowled 
that over almost as fast as he did the first, which was bowled at tremendous pace. The opening attack of uh, Garner and Marshall reminded me a little of when the Australian Test players uh, met up with them and Michael Holding in that uh, match in Adelaide a couple of years ago when Australia were 4 for 17 on the first morning. West Indies had to win the match. Well, Garner and Marshall bowled just as fast and this had just as much tremendous drive on this occasion. It is Davis again. I think uh, it can only be that Clive Lloyd has decided that even Joel Garner and Michael Holding coming back couldn't do the trick. Otherwise, there'd be no reason to bowl Davis ahead of them. And that's in a fairly relaxed frame of mind. All smiles. Yes, that was a magnificent spell which he was talking about. Just uh, 23 runs from the bat in 11 overs when Marshall and Garner bowled. Two shot. Richards is after it. Indian downfall caused initially by their lack of success with the bat. And Clive Lloyd there on the left must be ruining the fact that side only managed 159. Three runs for Pakistan to get into the final against India here at the MCG, the final of the World Championship of Cricket on Sunday. Scores are level in this second semi-final, Pakistan and West Indies. West Indies card 159 with top scores Harper 25 not out and Lloyd 25, Dujon 22 and Dustin Lazar destroyed them 5 for 28. And now Pakistan have 159 on the board. And there is the winning run. Pakistan are into the final. Joy for them but no joy at all for West Indies. Clive Lloyd congratulates Javid me and Dad. So too Viv Richards. And Pakistan will meet India now. India having gone through unbeaten in this competition to date. Both these teams, India and Pakistan from Group A in the World Championship of Cricket. What a thrill for Pakistan to turn around and beat this champion West Indian side. Tazim Omar and his skipper Javed Mirnad. 44 runs the two little batsmen put on and what a character that Tazim Omar is. He leapt in the air when victory came the Pakistani's way and before he would go off the field he went back to shake the hand of Clive Lloyd thank you for the game and the farewell on the board is a sad one Clive Lloyd saying goodbye to the MCG for the last time and certainly all of those people will go away with the fondest remembrances of Clive Lloyd the super cat and we'll be back in a few moments at the MCG with Richard Bennett what a terrific win from uh, Javid me and dad's team there by seven wickets with four overs to spare to go in to meet India in the final of this World Championship of Cricket down here at the MCG on Sunday. 
I think it's fair to say that uh, it's not the result everyone would have predicted before the start of this World Championship of Cricket, but both teams have deserved every victory they've had. They've played magnificently, and we should be in for a great match on Sunday for the final of this uh, World Championship. The Pakistan card in needing 160 to win, they achieved exactly that figure. Madasta Nazar out for six and Mohsen Khan 23. Ramiz Raja, a lovely innings, 60. And Kazim Omar, 42 in 57 balls face, Javed Meandad 10. Javed Meandad and Madasta Nazar, uh, the low score is there, but Javed was in at a pressure time at the end. Mohsen Khan batted for a long time and did very well there to stick around with Ramiz Raja. That was an excellent partnership where they put on 89 in 26 overs and laid the foundation for the victory. The bowling figures for West Indies. I thought Marshall and Garner were superb early on. They tried everything. They bowled very fast and with tremendous fire. So too holding. Winston Davis was expensive, always likely to be. He might uh, pick up wickets for you or he might be expensive. His length isn't exactly what's required in limited overs games. Roger Harper, 10 overs for 38, spun the ball a bit, and Viv Richards, 4 overs for 14. But no matter what uh, permutations Clive Lloyd came up with, the Pakistanis had the answer. That innings from Rummy's Raja, excellent. And it shows up there in the runs scored from balls faced, 60 runs from 88 balls faced. A very fine performance. And so too, the one by Kazim Omar, 42 from 57 balls faced. So the first man out in the Pakistan innings was Madasa Nazar and this was in the middle of a very fiery spell of bowling from Malcolm Marshall. He really turned it on out there, bowled with tremendous pace. That was a leading edge to Gus Logie out uh, at cover. And that was when the score was eight. We were into the fifth over then, so things hadn't been moving along all that quickly. The second we get to go down was that of uh, Rummy's Raja. And that was after the partnership of 89 with Mohsen Khan. Roger Harper, brought on by Clive Lloyd, took the court and bowl catch, tossed it up and had to go 30 yards to get it. They were so pleased at taking the second wicket. It was a fine innings from Rummy's Raja. He played some great strokes uh, off the back foot and also one or two very good drives. Uh, took the score along to 97. Then Mohsen Khan was out at 116. He was caught by Dujon of Ghana. And the innings of uh, Ramiz Raja and Kazim Omar are the ones that really set up the Pakistan victory. A tremendous performance from them, as uh, you'll hear now from Tony Gregg, who has the captains with him and the player of the match down the presentation area. Thank you, Rich. Well, the Victorian Cricket Association has allocated $10,000 out of their Benson and Hedges kitty for this match. And uh, we've seen Jov at Meandad smile on a few occasions, but he's got $6,000 to collect tonight. And he's smiling from year to year. Congratulations. Thanks, Tremendous Tony. performance. Yes, uh, I think we did very well because uh, they won the toss and they decided to bat and we wanted to bat did first too. Did that surprise too. you? Did that surprise yes, you? Yes, uh, but mm, because we played against New Zealand, uh, West Indies so many times and we gave them very tough time, you know, when we were, when they were batting second. And I think on this wicket, it's a very good chance to win the toss and put at least 230 and 240 and it's very difficult to get runs against this sort of bowling. Mm -hmm. And I think we contained them and we got wickets, we, we bowled well, we fielded well and we bowled them out for 160, and 160 was an enough target for us, and we got it in 45 overs. Right, well, what about India? They're playing real well now. I mean, they keep telling us if you lose to India, you, you better not go home. <laughs> no, I don't think so, <laughs> because everybody understands cricket now, and right. uh, we're just looking forward to India, and we, we all are, uh, my team playing well too, because we lost yeah. one game, and we beat uh, West Indies, and everybody right. knew this team is very very difficult to beat in especially in one day game and you've done it well done you've done it well, well and morally we are high and we're just looking forward to india well we look forward to sunday thank you well played today well clive lloyd has uh, played many a game uh, down at the mcg and uh, his side lost today but he's been good enough to come down and accept the three thousand dollar check bad luck clive not enough runs 
No, I think it's a combination of two things, lack of cricket and bad batting, really. Uh, what about the change in your tactics? The, uh, not often that you decide to bat first. What, what is behind that? Well, it looked like a wicket that um, would give a little bit of help later on. Um, and, you know, we, we just said we didn't get enough runs. At another field, we got about 200 after, even when we lost um, early wickets, we were still looking to get to 200, and I think they would have struggled a bit. Well, I thought that the bowlers in the initial stage were a bit unlucky. I mean, they, were, they obviously did everything they possibly could. A few breaks, and it might have been a bit different. Yeah, I would think so. Well, when they bowled, uh, when they bowled everything, we hit went straight to field, <laughs> really. Um, it was one of those days, I suppose. We, we didn't play well enough, and um, yeah, good luck to Pakistan. They played much better than we did. I think it should be a very good final, really. Right, well, thanks for coming down tonight. Bad luck. Pleasure. No problem. Right, well, uh, what about the man of the match? That uh, that young fella, the brother of uh, Wazim Raja, Ramiz Raja, $1,000 check, and these uh, Benson Hedges gold goblets. Congratulations, well played. There we are. Was that, Lovely. don't forget the check, we've got to put <laughs> that in there. Okay. Was that the, the most tense innings you've had to play? Were you very nervous about all that, or did you just yes, enjoy actually, it? Yes, actually, you see, Benson Hedges has got a great, great reputation of uh, a very good side, and they are actually a great side. And really, it was a it turned out to be a pleasure. Well, I had a few bruises to begin with, and uh, eventually it went very well. Congratulations. Thanks you very much. You looking forward to the game on Sunday? Yes, very much. Now um, It'll be a real big one. Yes. <laughs> well, they'll all be plugged in. Congratulations Thanks today. Great night. Well, there you are, Rich. That's all from down here. Back to the central commentary position. You really do need the wisdom of Solomon, don't you, to find the right balance between too much cricket these days for the players and uh, not enough cricket. We'll come back with a commercial break in just a moment. And right around Australia, people are sitting back trying to work out their classic catches for the moment. Those of you who missed them early on, the 1984-85 uh, Coca-Cola Butler's classic catches have been reduced from the 40 we've been showing you down to the final seven. Here they are running through from catch A to catch G. Superb catch down the lake side. Marshall caught Ritson, all by Hogg. For 55, the West Indies 7 for 362. Out! What a catch! That is a classic catch at Coca-Cola Bottle of Beauty. And the Australians may really uh, rue that shot by Graham Wood. Off spinner. Oh, and well caught! A brilliant catch there by Graham Wood. Beautifully bowled. It's almost an off break. Held it back. Graham's played too early, just kicked a bit, and Wood took a blinder. Oh, it's up in the air. Second choice. Got him. What a catch. That's a classic catch. If ever there was one on the second occasion, he caught it. And have a look at the ecstasy out there. They know that was a vitally important wicket. And Wonk has done it again, after having picked up a catch at the uh, point. Great catch. Jeffrey Dujon. Vessels. Oh, what a catch! That's a classic catch if you ever saw one. Batting at first, it brings off a beauty. The English contingent in the crowd rise to their feet. Union Jack's way. Man coming in. From deep behind leg. Catch. What a catch. Absolutely magnificent. This fellow who took five wickets against Australia the other evening, Wazim Akram, has now taken the catch that might win this game for Pakistan. And indeed, it did win the, the game for Pakistan. It took them through to the semi-final, and now they've beaten West Indies to go into the final against India. Those are the classic catches, marked A to G. The names in white in the middle are the men who took the catches, Rickson, Haynes, Wood, Wonky, Dujon, Gatting, and Wazim Akram. What you have to do is uh, put those catches, marked A to G, in the correct order, in the way you think the commentators will do it, and they're the prizes. Six Nissan Pulsar GX hatchbacks, one in each state, 
Entry forms have the details. The, ent uh, the entries close on Tuesday, 19th of March. Winners announced Thursday, the 28th of March. And you have to put the catches in the order in which you think the commentators will rate them. The radio stations are 2WS, 2NX, Eon FM, 4BC, 4AY, 5DN, 6PR and 7HT. Well, we've had two terrific semi-finals. There's been a lot of tension in both games. India too good for New Zealand in the first game. That was yesterday at the Sydney Cricket Ground. I thought that was a great game of cricket. And the one here today, Pakistan defeating West Indies and the plate winners final, therefore, on Saturday at the SCG, March 9, will be New Zealand against the West Indies. That is at 9.50 a.m. That's the time we're on air. It's a day match in Sydney. Now, the final is between India and Pakistan. MCG, Sunday, March 10, 2.20 p.m. It'll be quite interesting to uh, do the television for that. We're on air at 2.20. The uh, estimate of the Indian population is uh, about 688 million. And uh, Pakistan, uh, many, many millions as well. We must be getting up towards uh, a billion possible viewers for the television on the subcontinent because we went live to India the other day for the first time right throughout uh, the last match India played. That was the semi-final against New Zealand. So tremendous interest on the subcontinent now in uh, the final, India v Pakistan. We look forward to having you with us at the plate winners final. That's uh, in Sydney in the day match on Saturday. For the moment, on behalf of all the commentators from the Melbourne Cricket Ground, it's good night. <laughs>